Hi, this is Sherry Nelson, and you're listening to Pop Culture Addicts. Welcome to Pop Culture Addicts, the weekly show that brings you interviews and discussions with people in our pop culture world. You know, that means we get to talk more about movies, more music, more video games, and more. (laughs) Don't miss a week. You never know who's going to be our next guest. So, okay, addicts, are you ready for your pop culture fix? Welcome to Pop Culture Addicts. Our guest today is an actress, a producer of the Jimmy Star Show. She's been a co-host of Fan Room Live. She's a Maxim model and even a former lumber salesperson. There's going to be so much to talk about. When with a bio this diverse, obviously we can only be talking about the one, the only, the exquisitely amazing Sherry Nelson. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. We're excited. <laughs> That's quite the intro. No, we try. We want well, each know, of our guests to feel special. Easy. The intros are easy when there's a lot of information behind the person. You've got a lot <laughs> of things we can talk about. Exactly. So first off, other than us just being excited, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because I got to to talk with you a little bit here and there, and I've got to see how cool you are. And that was only backed up because of what my friend Jason Taylor from Three Geeks Mm -hmm. Podcast kept telling me. He kept saying, you guys need to talk with Sherry Nelson. You guys need to talk with Sherry Nelson. And I'm like, okay, tell me why I need to talk with Sherry Nelson. He's because she's super cool and she's a fun interview. And I went, well, let's see for our show. What do we like? Oh, we like super cool and fun. All right. So so here we are. We're talking with the super cool and fun Sherry Nelson. Now, after only a few interactions, I have to agree that Jason has been absolutely spot on uh, with his assessment. You are pretty cool. So what forces in life led you down to this road of coolness? I don't know. I think I'm just, ha- I'm, I'm a happy person. You know, every day you know, you wake up, I'm happy. I'm awake. I don't, I'm not a victim girl. You know, some people seek problems, I think, or I just, I'm excited to try new things and do as much as I can, but um, God bless Jason. I, I just, I adore him. And I really had a good time on his show. And I remember I, a friend of mine goes, I watched your show. What happened to your shirt? I said, what? And and I had it buttoned up and almost a quarter of the way through, and I must got real excited because it popped. And then I thought, oh, so I said to Jason, I go, I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed that that happened. And they go, we never noticed, but you want to come back? (laughs) But, and then, and then what an honor it was to meet you two as well at the benefit podcast-a-thon. So um, no, all good things seem to be coming from streaming and podcasting and the level of intelligence and integrity behind these various shows, you know, that have um, really accelerated during COVID, I think is, is a really great opportunity for the public to tap into. I agree. I, there's there's a lot of shows that did start because people were you know looking for something to do during that uh, lost year of 2020 and looking for something to do and keep themselves sane. And, you know, that's one of the things that helped keep my sanity. I'll be honest with you is, is during 2020 having, having this format to be able to reach out and talk to people on, uh, of course I host two other shows focused on forward and Kathleen and I host together along with our buddy, Nick funny science fiction podcast. So it gives us an opportunity to talk with people from all walks and talks. And it's been, it's been really kind of a neat travel for us. And I'm sure that, you know, some of the things that we've already mentioned, like the fan room live experience that you, that you help co-host has, I'm sure has some of that same feeling for you. Oh, definitely. There's, I, I'm in a small town in Canada in the Southeast corner of British Columbia and everybody knows everybody. And we've all heard the music on the radio. We've all seen them in movies and television. And, and here I am speaking to them and I get terribly nervous and beforehand because I just really want them to know I appreciate them and and but also I appreciate the audience so I never want to waste anyone's time but now when I hear the music of say Kenny Aronoff in John Cougar it sounds different to me and and I I just it's like I've won the lottery I cannot believe that I'm sitting here most of the time or now I can't believe people would want to talk to me, but uh, it's it's amazing. And, you know, when you like our show Fan Room Live, you're a fan. But when you meet them, 
they always exceed your expectations. And uh, Tim, you know, when we met Joey Belladonna the other day right. and, and his wife and no podcasts, I love that people don't, don't shoo them away. They're not, um, not, they are taken seriously now. And I, and I'm happy to be a part of this type of platform. That's awesome. And I do appreciate too, that, that podcasting has become its own form of media. It is, it's coming out there. It's, it's becoming a bigger thing. And along with like YouTube, that YouTube has really expanded for podcasts as well, that we can, we can do videos, we can do YouTube videos, we can do YouTube live and we can, we can share our experiences with the world that way. Well, and Kathleen, when I, that was one of the greatest aspects when I used to sell lumber because uh, we were 40 miles north of the Montana border. And so probably about 80% of our inventory went across the border to the U.S. consumer. And I got to talk to people a lot before Zoom, so it was always on the phone. But I got to speak to people in Florida, in Tennessee, in Texas. And you, like you said, you get different perspectives throughout the states. And the fun thing is, you know, when uh, Super Bowl's on, and you know, you got someone from Tampa versus somebody in uh, Ohio or something, and getting their perspective of why they won or didn't win, and and it's just amazing that the world has gotten smaller because of podcasting. But we can connect, and and I think you're both in Michigan, right? We are. Yep. Yeah. So you you already mentioned being in the lumber trade, but you made the jump from lumber trade to modeling and then becoming a celebrity in your own right so how severe was that culture shock for you where you grew up where i mean you said that it's a small town 80 is it like 85 people something like that from my research it's it's a very small town but you go from that to then being on the red carpet for su wong's oscar night academy gala like how do you how did you deal with that culture shock well I guess one of the benefits for me is that COVID is almost like a, a blanket or a cocoon in this. I'm out there, but I'm still kind of locked down. And I, <laughs> and even in lumber, I was always a lot more stronger on the phone than I was face to face, but I never, ever anticipated being in this industry. Uh, my family had sold our lumber company in April of 2018 And I was touring the United States looking for lumber trading jobs. And I had decided that I was going to open my own lumber firm down in the United States just because of the consumption level and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then when I entered the Maxim contest, I just thought I'd enter it just to say, you know, when I'm 80, oh, I did that. I never anticipated (laughs) it going as far as it did. Because you don't want to live with regrets of I should have, could have, (laughs) maybe. So... And it kind of is a shock and I don't think anybody knows me or anything, but I'm, I'm learning a lot. And like I said, I I can't believe that I get to speak to people. Yesterday I was actually trying to connect with people for friends of mine going to like, you know, when you're kind of on uh, house arrest, it seems like sometimes I'm trying to do as much as I can. So I've been trying to help um, with friends going to New York, getting them on shows and, here I have an email for somebody at Universe, NBC Universal. I never thought I'd have. So, <laughs> but no, I never expected it. And and I know 15 minutes of fame is is the capacity, and I I'm appreciating it as much as I can. And I just don't want to do any missteps because I'm on your show. I don't want you guys going delete that segment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a concern. I don't uh, think so. Oh, you never know. I get comfortable and. Well, you know, there's always that, but I think, you know, for the most part, I think you get to a portion, uh, a portion or station in your life where you start to understand who and what you are and, and you act accordingly, uh, no matter what the, no matter the circumstances. And I think that who you are speaks volumes for how you're going to act in, in other, in other circumstances. So I have great faith in you that that that's not going to be a concern. So well, I, see- I, I greatly respect authority. Um, I, I don't like to be told what to do all the time. But, you know, I have my father, I have Jimmy and Eileen, I have you now, I've got Jason. I just want to do the best I can and and add value to shows because they've invested in me and 
you know, God bless Jason, he invested in me to convince you to bring me on your show. So it's people like that that I work extra hard for. It's not a selfish thing. I just really want them to go, okay, that wasn't a waste of time. <laughs> I understand that. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah, Jason's a pretty good dude. His Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, bromance affection aside, we'll talk about that no, later. He's going to watch this episode and he's going to think we like him. Yeah, I'm getting worried about that myself, but <laughs> no, he's a good dude. So, all right, let's talk about lumber sales. Now, I used to work for a construction supply company. I spent 15 years selling doors, uh, uh, commercial grade hardware, you know, door frames, bathroom partitions, accessories, all the all that type of stuff. So, for me, I, I'm used to working with lumber yards and talking to people, you know, talking about swing of doors and size of door and all these different things. Um, but let's play a game, the game of tell me three things. And it's going to be about lumber sales. OK, so yeah. here we go. Number one, tell me, what did you like about about lumber sales? Oh, a lot. Uh, as I said, connecting with people all over. Uh, number two, it was an adrenaline for me. It was like a cardio for my mind and my heart because the market was so volatile. And while well, everyone knows this past year, it was extremely volatile. So it was ever evolving, ever changing. And, and I learned a lot. And so it was like, you know, the stock market, but commodity. Mm -hmm. I get that. I always like the thrill of the, the thrill of the hunt is what I called it when he was trying to get a sale and shaking his it down and and you know you get that moment of you know ah yes all right so number two what wasn't your favorite thing a down market probably a down market. <laughs> you know when the phone rang you're gonna get beat up so yeah a falling market was never a fun thing all right my least favorite thing was dealing with architects never liked them. There was maybe one that I, I liked, but most of them, not really. All right. So what would you prefer, an architect or a building inspector? Oof. Who's the lesser of the two evils? Uh, the building inspector, honestly, because I always had I always had more fortune with the building inspectors because, frankly, most of my stuff that I was doing, um, the building inspector and I really, rarely ever talked. So for me, uh, you know, the... I was selling the stuff. Somebody else was installing it. So if they didn't install it properly, that typically wasn't my fault. Um, you know, so for me, building inspector, yeah, he's not a bad guy. But the architect who drew it wrong <laughs> or designed it wrong, yeah, I didn't like him. Um, but anyway. <laughs> All right. And so number three, tell us something ab uh, about lumber sales that the average person wouldn't most likely know. Uh, lumber sales, it's the foundation of a healthy economy. So this applies particularly if you're in a more rural area where you see the highway and trains. If you see a lot of lumber moving, that means that you've got a vivacious, a really healthy economy, whether it's a state or a city. So a lot of lumber moving is the um, healthy economy. Well, that's a pretty good sign that they just cleared a whole field over by my house. <laughs> So what was your favorite species to work with? Uh, honestly, I liked oak. Oh, I you're liked... a hardwood guy. See, I yeah. was softwood. I liked oak because, well, see, I'm looked at it from durability. The men standpoint. are probably going, what in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. We'll, we'll pretend it's just you and I talking for the moment. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. This is good. And Kathleen will catch up in a moment. No, uh, I've, done, I've done building. I'm good. I, I know you have. <laughs> No, she's actually pretty handy with a hammer, um, and not just for you know, for chasing down John. But <laughs> I have only ever split my finger open once with a hammer. There you go. Hammering's not easy. I respect the construction worker. Oh, I was I was running electrical wires in a basement and using the hammer to put the the wire nail up and hit the side of my finger and split my nail in half. Yeah, that's not a good day. You never know how strong you are until you pick up a hammer. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I always preferred the uh, the oak because now I looked at it from a durability standpoint. Um, if I was selling an oak door, chances are the oak door was going to last longer because it was a hard wood and a thicker veneer, and it was going to be easier to maintain. Uh, a birch door was going to, you know, softer wood. It wasn't going to last as long. Probably going to get nicked up and dirty a little easier. So, yeah. Uh, we did, so most of our wood was for construction, but 
my the doors that they've designed these days are phenomenal. Oh yeah. Like, talk about the entry with you know that like the oak or the nice stain and the glass in it. It's like oh, a yeah. cathedral entry almost. It's beautiful. Yeah, they've done. They've come a long way in door design, especially for residential. Uh, some of the stuff that they're doing, you know, the the cur. I always l really like the, the curved top doors, and you know, then you have yeah. these intricate glass and and yeah. panel designs inside of them. Really cool. Yeah, that was actually one that we were looking at as a front door. At I think it was Home Depot had it that it looked like an old dungeon door. Like it oh, had cool. it had like hack marks in it. Oh, it really? was really nifty. It was really cool. Like had the little like the the barred trap door in the middle of it. Well, a friend of mine, I remember they were renovating a house, and it's a neat conversation piece. If you've got the room, um, I don't know if a church something had happened, but they had acquired one of the doors. It was a double door, and they made that as their table. They put glass over it. So oh, cool. Well, I don't know cool. if that would bring good things to your home, but <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And by the way, Home Depot, we're open for sponsorship. Anyway, yeah. okay, moving on. <laughs> so, so as I, I don't have as you, much. I, are you able to say who you work with? Am I? I worked for I worked for a small company, so it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for actually for several different, uh, but the only one that I'll mention was a company called Page Hardware Supply. Oh, which, okay. Because um, a couple. Well, I guess two years ago, I was down in California at the Sierra Pacific Lumber Convention, and oh, are they big and they're good. Like, mm -hmm. like they're a fantastic company, and I was looking at their door moldings and their doors and windows, and wow. Understood. Door nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're lumber nerds, aren't we? <laughs> so I don't have as much background in lumber. I honestly could not tell the difference between most of them. But I do have an interest in the medical field. I worked in the medical field for a few years. And now as a mom, I'm just I'm just mom first aid, which happens on a daily basis with my daughter. But medical injuries, medical field information still interests me. So working with lumber, do you have any of those interesting, how did you hurt yourself? How did that happen? <laughs> No, not myself, uh, but it's funny because uh, I was on a, a show a couple of weeks ago and, and he's a wrestler by trade and he was asking about injuries and things like that. And I said, well, the worst is the loggers. If, you know, they fall a tree and a tree butts them and one of our guys was injured badly and his leg broke in three places. And he's a big man. Like you envision a lumberjack and they're big, strong men. Mm -hmm. And it took them about an hour and a half to come down the mountain. So with a shattered leg like Ooh. that, and oh, talk about the pain. But it was fun because he goes, it's one of their wrestler friends, they would throw a log over their shoulder and they would, that's how they would train and work out. And I said, well, you call it wrestling in British Columbia, we call it logger sport. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of big men up there. I actually, the... I remember ESPN had the, the lumberjack competitions on for a while, which was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the fun things is that uh, when my great-grandfather started our lumber company, um, we would take the, the timber from the top of the mountain and they would put it down the river. And then as winter approached, it would freeze. So a lot of the workers were from Minnesota. And so when the log jam happened and froze, they would go home and then they'd come back in the spring. If you watch those locker sports, a lot of the winners are from the Minnesota area. That so it's kind true. of a, yeah, they grow them big there. <laughs> so recently, uh, Sherry, uh, I was able to be involved. We were talking about this uh, a little bit pre-show, and um, I was able to be involved in a fan room live experience that you guys recently had uh, with Joey Belladonna from the thrash metal band Anthrax, which is one of the four horsemen of thrash metal. For those of you who are wondering what the four horsemen of thrash metal are, that of course is Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax. They are the four horsemen of, of that. So for me, growing up being a metal fan and, and liking heavy metal music, it was very cool uh, to be able to to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction and uh, you know in the fan room live experience. And to find out that Joey was just really a down-to-earth, cool dude. And I felt like he really wanted to get to know his fans. And so 
for me, it was a very unique experience. So thank you to everybody at Fan Room for, for putting that together and, and, uh, and, you know, for you for helping me know that that was actually coming up and, and, and so I could be a part of it. I was really excited to be a part of it. But my question no, for you, so happy when because we can see who's coming on and I could see you coming and I was really excited, but I hadn't realized you knew my co-host Stacy Toy, so it was a double whammy. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's it was really cool to see Stacy on there and she was so happy and that was that was a lot of fun. Um but my question is is how did you get involved with Fan Room Live and why do you recommend that people tune into Fan Room Live, not only just to watch it when the show comes on on YouTube, you know, but also when, you know, to to, to pay attention to get tickets and and buy into the experience? Oh, uh, well, I, I met Jeff Krause, one of the founders of the show. He, it's actually Jeff Krause and uh, Cedric the Entertainer. It's their brainchild. And I met Jeff Krause through a mutual friend, Eileen Shapiro, and they were looking for another co-host. So um, one evening when Leland Sklar was coming on, uh, they did a test drive with me and uh, I, I enjoyed it. And thankfully I'm still there. Um, the reason why I, I can't say enough about the show, it's the epitome of professionalism and, and it's a, it's something that you create a memory for yourself. We talk here, but you actually get to have a one-on-one -on -one with your person that you admire and they black us out. It's intimate. And then you'll get a copy of that for yourself. And you know, these, the best fans in the world are the fan room live ones. And, and the level of love and respect and knowledge of our guests just is, is awe-inspiring and they get so excited and they get so fun and no I learned a lot we had uh from another thrasher band we had the great Alex Skolnick on and he's the guitarist for Testament and oh, yeah. um, he so many came with guitars and they played him songs how do you like this riff what am I doing wrong or I remember Kenny Aronoff came on and there's this girl she was pretty fantastic her name was Pepper and uh She'd seen him, I think, about 30 times, and she still had the ticket stubs. She made him a drink. And, yeah, the best fans ever. And and I don't know a lot about the music industry. Uh, you hear rumbling sometimes about them not making much money on ticket sales and things like that. But this is almost better than buying a T-shirt before a concert. You get to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And, and uh, Tim, you saw Joey. He, right. he remembered people. From yeah, I thought that was really 10, cool. 15 years, he goes, did I see you at this show? Or he'd be, well, make sure we're going to be here, so come backstage. And you, it's beyond a, a meet. It, you do build that connection, and, and it's wonderful. And, like, I'm always so euphoric and on cloud nine at the end of a show, and and I, I believe that, that they are too sometimes. But for when Joey Belladonna came on the show, it was a bonus for me because I've always admired his beautiful wife, Krista. And mm -hmm. I remember when, she came, when he came on, it was Krista there. She goes, I'm here. I'm like, oh, come on. And she did. And so <laughs> it was wonderful getting two perspectives because Kathleen, uh, I'm always curious with a singer, what, what is their greatest song? And this was the first time that I actually had a loved one or a wife of a of a superstar like that and i remember asking krista what's what what gives her the shivers and and i don't know if you remember tim and she said yeah. when joey sings the the stars national anthem, national anthem and Aww. and i got shivers thinking about and they had um him and sturgis just a few weeks ago and he sang it there with the military and the sun was setting, and as he was singing it and reaching those notes, the sun was getting more emboldened and redder and redder. And then when it was over, they just revved up their uh, motorcycles and with pride. And, and I'm a Canadian, and Canadians always admire the patriotism in the United States, and, and it was really wonderful to see. And, and Joey, you know, he's like all the others. They're way more, they're so much better than I hope they'll be. And, and I always try to be an inclusive and, and do my promos to hopefully people get on there. I think the only hiccup is this, the Zoom situation. People still don't understand it or you're right. So right. hopefully in time, but, you know, and, and 
Fenron's been so good to me. I got to pick my first guest and I picked uh, Way Jennings and he's the grandson of Waylon Jennings. And, mm-hmm. and I never thought I'd hear that voice again. And I, I had my phone down and I was playing um, something in all like videos, you know, how they'll go to the next one. And all of a sudden I go, Oh, a Waylon Jennings song. This is great. And I thought, sounds a little different. And like one of the guests on our show, Linda Evgen, she's uh, out of Nashville. She goes, I knew your granddaddy. She goes, but you've got something special. And he does. And he's just climbing. So it's, it, you learn something all the time. And, and it's, it's, it's the best. I, I can't say enough about it. It's, it's a wonderful show. And yeah. So, and I also, if your audience is interested, just, you know, drop a line to Tim or Kathleen and say, who do you want to see? Who do you want to meet? Yeah, absolutely. We always need to know who is that demographic. Uh, we sell a lot of tickets, and Way really sold a lot of tickets, and he was our first country one. So you never know what the demographic wants. So it's it's all for them. So that, so hopefully you guys can help us out. Yeah, well, we'd love to. And one of the cool things I, I just want to add on to that. One of the cool things about talking with Joey. So I was wearing um, one of my Detroit hats because we're from Michigan, and I'm a. I'm a huge Detroit Tigers and well, not so much anymore. I don't really pay attention to baseball anymore, but hockey, I'm a huge hockey fan, uh, Red Wings. But uh, <laughs> so I had, you know, I had my Detroit uh, Red Wings uh, St. Patrick's Day hat on and uh, and we started talking about that. And he's, you know, from Minnesota, he's a Vikings fan anyway. And uh, we started talking about football and we were talking about the difference between, you know, the NFC North and who was, who was going to do good. And what did I think the, the Vikings chances were versus the Lions chances and, you know, with a new coach and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here talking with, with, you know, the lead singer of one of the, the all time biggest thrash metal bands about football. And I'm like, how cool is this? You know, this is, you know, out of all the things I could have talked with Joey Belladonna about, I got to talk to him about football. And to me, that was a really cool experience because, you know, although I like their music and I've been a fan of their music and there's a couple songs that, you know, that I, I, when I think of Anthrax, you know, somebody says, well, you know, what song of theirs do you like? I have a couple that come to mind right away, but I will always, you know, until the day that I die, I'll be able to say, yeah, I talked with Joey Belladonna about football. Yeah. Well, and like I said, it's going to sound totally different on the radio if it ever comes up. You're like, it sounds different than music to me. And Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing, and and another side note is is like we had C J Ramon on from the Ramones, yeah. and my good the demographic was heavy Russian Scandinavian in the audience of fans, and oh, really? with Testament we had a lot from South America, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, people oh, cool. buying tickets, and and you saw with Joey a lot from Australia, a mm-hmm. heavy presence of America. And it's all over the world. And and when C.J. Ramon was on, this was a, a Russian professor. He was a young boy to me in, in appearance. And he had some Russian vodka. And C.J. had just come back from coaching his daughter, and they'd won their uh, baseball championship. So he toasted Joey, and Joey toasted him back with a beer. And it's, it's unbelievable. And so if That's anyone cool. comes, just remember these things because, that will make you a standout, I think, to your hero. And and that boy also, he he's a, a literature pre- president, and uh, he said, oh, I have to tell you that uh, War and Peace, that's not how it translates. It should have been War and Society. And I thought, okay, that changes everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you have all these trivial pursuit anecdotes, yeah. you know, or in my case, useless information for a cocktail party, but I can't, yeah. <laughs> No, Kathleen, I look forward to having you there one day. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to be looking into it after we're done. Like <laughs> The whole idea is fab- is fascinating to me. It's It'll a ton so of fun, fun, honestly. Yeah, well, I think going forward, we're going to have a lot more shows doing these types of things, I think, more interactive. Yeah, yeah, it's a great concept because even this is the type of thing that can grow and continue on even you know, post all this COVID crap that's, you know, going on still even in 2021. But, you know, you, you know, this is something that doesn't have to go away when COVID's over. You know, well, this is- and, yeah. And it almost, you know, it parallels uh, the brick and mortar in the sense, you know, shopping's online now heavier than going to mm-hmm. the mall. Well, podcasting, I do mine on my telephone, on my, you know, Android. And so you don't need the big studios anymore. So, you know, it might be a cost savings. And like you said, you can do it anywhere. 
You can go right. anywhere and do it. Yeah, exactly. So we recently, one of our shows that we have, um, we just recorded is with Rebecca and Trish from 180 Sisterhood, which is a production company based out of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Oh. And we actually ended up talking to them about poutine for like 20 minutes because because <laughs> poutine is awesome. Because poutine is delicious. So <laughs> are there other Canadian foods or beverages that you think Americans should be more aware of. And Moosehead beer is an acceptable answer there because Moosehead is delicious. <laughs> I didn't bring it. I had a case of it sitting beside me on the coffee <laughs> hour show and they said, Moosehead beer. Because, you know, I didn't know what we were going to talk about. And I had Moosehead beer, Wayne Gretzky, our Canadian hero. He's got his own 99 whiskey. Yeah. Um, okay, so I sent these to our friend, Eileen Hero. No, uh, uh, at Christmas time especially, there's uh, Nanaimo bars and butter tarts. Mm -hmm. And whenever I send those to my friends in the United States, I always go, ooh, this is better than this. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, easy recipe. So That better be a really good candy bar. <laughs> oh, that sounds delightful. I can't, yeah. think of the, I can't think of the name of the candy bar that we normally get when we go to the Toronto area. Caramel? It might be. It's more, it's kind of crunchy. It's like a, a. Oh, crunchy bar. It might be crunchy bar. I don't know the name of it. Oh, it's on a, I think it's on a red wrapper. Kit Kat. No, it's, it's a, it's a Canadian. I don't know. I might be leading you down a, uh, the primrose path here too. So um, I'll have to look it up, but. See, and it's funny is we are, we're so close to Canada that it's one of those, we growing up, we went to Canada quite frequently and Canadian food is. He's my friend. <laughs> I say the same about in America. Your sour cream. Oh, I have a weakness. And I I am a hillbilly because I love Jack in the Box. Ooh. I, yeah. I, in your restaurants. And I was just talking to a friend. They said, have you ever gone to Golden Corral? No, but they say it's delicious. <laughs> All right. So here they are. There's two of them, actually. And they're, they're pretty similar. One's called Coffee Crisp. Oh, my dad's favorite. Yeah. Uh, that is delightful. Uh, and then there's another one called Crispy Crunch. Those that, oh. that one that one has the red wrapper. That's the one I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah, no, good pick. Up here at Dairy Queen, you get Crispy Crunch blizzards or Coffee Crisp blizzards and stuff. So they do ours. I remember oh, when I was yes, younger. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Road no, trip. I remember when I was younger. Um, the Babe Ruth bar, <gasps> and we finally got it. Oh. <laughs> See, and it's. Uh, now I hungry. really want to go. Hungry, I want to go to Dairy Queen for a coffee crew. <laughs> Blizzard. That sounds so good. Yeah, Canadian Canadian candies are nummy. What are the... Oh. There's another one that I used to get when I was little. They're kind of like M&M's, but they're not. They're not M&M. Oh, brand. Smarties. Yes. Oh, I remember Smarties. Those... Yeah. The Canadian Smarties, though, because American, I mean, there's the American Smarty candy, but those are the, the little sugar pill ones. But the Canadian ones are like the chocolate crispy. Those things really? are so good. <laughs> that, when you said Smarties, I was thinking of the, the American version then. Because... No, the Canadian ones are, they're like M&Ms, but they're different. I remember when uh, when I was in Lumber, a, a lot of my buyers were ex-professional athletes, football players with aches and pains. And uh, every once in a while, I'd, I'd send them a little care package and I'd have, you know, I'd have the Smarties, the coffee crisp, and I would have the caramel milk in there. And then I'd have ketchup chips, dill pickle chips for them. Oh, and dill pickle chips. So oh, good. Okay, I'll better send you some. I'll get your address. I love Google <laughs> pickle chips. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I'd get a standing order right before Super Bowl and I'd be shipping all this stuff. And I think sooner or later we're just going to start a podcast about food. It's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> we can it's do an entire happen. episode about the pop culture of food. I mean, yeah. we're Americans. Yeah. Food is important to us. <laughs> oh, I love coming down to your country. We don't have where I live here. We don't have a lot of Mexican food, and I love Mexican food. Yeah. We have taco time, but yeah, yeah. There's there's actually a Mexican restaurant in my hometown that is the absolute best. The owners are actually from Colombia. Best Mexican food I have ever had. Is it Mexican food or is it Colombian food? There's it's actually Mexican. Like the restaurant okay. is called Mexican Connection. Okay. 
I'm just curious because there there is a difference between there that. There is. And... There is, but the restaurant is called Mexican Connection. Interesting. If you're All ever right. in Hastings, Michigan, check it out because it's to die for. Okay, I'm going there with you when I come to Michigan. Definitely. Good date. Definitely. Deal. Deal. We'll make it happen. Tim's like, wait, I'm driving through Hastings. Exactly. I will I will happen to, to show up. It'll be great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh Sherry, let's talk about your your recent published interview. So you had an opportunity, and I read it over the other day. I was actually, I want to commend you. That was a really well-written interview with the uh, former Playboy Playmate, Deborah Driggs. Um, now, from what I understand, this is your first published interview. Am I correct in that? Uh, no, no, I've done a few, and uh, uh -huh. I, I, was, I was happy to do Deborah Driggs. Uh, no, when I, I come across people, I that I believe people should know about. Uh, mm -hmm. I try to write about them and I hope that it's respectful. And just for the fact that we grow up right now, we're in such a filtered, quick selfie, you know, environment that right. I don't know that people look to role models anymore, aside from the physicality. And Deborah Driggs is beyond beautiful, but she's got just a spirit of her where she she works for what she, she just she's got that old school ethic where she knows what she wants she works hard for it mm -hmm. if she stumbles she figures out how to get back up and keep climbing that mountain and i love that about people because i don't like people that if they don't get it they find an ulterior escape route of blaming somebody or sure. making up a situation well i didn't get it because it no, you know, like when I was touring in the United States to work at lumber trading places, I didn't get a few jobs and I don't know why, but I want to know why so that I can improve on my skill set mm -hmm. or, you know, oftentimes, and I don't ever begrudge anybody, I'm a Canadian. So, you know, they're going to get asked, what can a Canadian do that an American can't? So, um, but I, I never begrudge a company for not hiring if I, if that was the reason. And Deborah, she's, I just love that she's constantly climbing up that mountain. It's inspiring. And she just does things to tweet to make herself a standout. She was uh, cheerleading and dancing in Japan and she picked up a bit of Japanese language. And then they started putting her into Japanese commercials. I just did a profile of Jackie Callan, the first lady of boxing, which is close to your home. And uh, she's another one of those ladies that, like, she, she was on the show and she was asked, did you know that you were going to break barriers as the first lady, as the first boxing coach, boxing manager? She goes, no, that never factored into it. I just really loved the sport and I wanted to learn all that I could to be the best that I could be to earn my right seat at the table with the other boxing coaches, managers. And I really believed in my boxer. So I really wanted them to win. And just that mindset that selfless, you know, she's mm -hmm. doing it. The selfish part, I guess, is is learning. But she didn't go in there demanding a position because she's female, and I don't see any in the gym. No, it was quiet, and uh, you'll see in my article, she just she just did it her way in the sense where she didn't ruffle feathers, she didn't lie, she didn't cheat. It was old school again, you know, hard work, knowing what she wants, believing in somebody else, and trying to elevate them to a win of what she did. And... And I, I'm, I'm proud that I got to meet that lady too. And I just, and I, but I'm not completely relegated to females and I have to make sure I start doing males because I don't want to be, you know, in that corner because there's so many great people in this world that we need to put the spotlight on instead of, you know, right. um, Insta good or things like that. And no disrespect to that. Um, but I, I just, I know as a young girl, I always looked up to people who wanted to be, you know, emulate strong women. So, or I was mostly actually would look at strong men. Like I love Jamie Diamond and I was always in awe of how his, how he raised to the level that he is in banking. And, um, but I think that that's why I do it. I just want people to know they're in the presence of greatness. Yeah, there's a ton of stories out there, uh, you know, whether male or female, there's a ton of stories out there that are inspiring and that can help people see, you know, what the path is to get to their, their the next step with whatever they're trying to to do and accomplish in life. One of the things I really appreciated about your article um, was the 
I, you know, because I, I think a lot of people that, you know, and maybe this is just the perception that's given off because of the way Hollywood has presented it over the years is that people who have been in, in that profession or who have gone, you know, been a playboy model or whatever, is like they try to hold on to that you know that 15 we referenced this earlier that 15 minutes of fame they try to hold on to that for everything that it's worth and you know and they they claw and scrimp and save and and whatever to try and make sure that they look like they did you know 20 30 years ago but one of the things i appreciate about your interview with deborah was that i don't think she's doing that i don't i don't think that she's trying to hold on to something that that is not anymore something that once was As a matter of fact one of the quotes in the article was that from her is that aging gracefully is a full-time job and how she's she's trying to take care of herself to to just you know let things happen naturally but you know but still take care of herself and i thought that was a really cool thing to just be comfortable in her own skin and whatever that skin is as she ages and i thought that was I don't know why that struck me, but it just did. I just thought that was a really neat point for somebody who's been in the profession that she's been in to have that perception of things. Yeah, well, and I think it's because we're con constantly bombarded by photos of a certain um, just people because they look a certain way, not that they're doing something. Mm -hmm. And uh like I was talking to this one young girl and I, and she was having a bit of trouble in school and, and, you know, I said, geez, some of the issues that they were having. And I thought, well, when I was in school, we just wanted to be a standout because we were the fastest runner or the, the, the challenges they have in this day is, is incomprehensible to me of the, the emotional baggage that I think it's going to carry with them for the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, but right now, like British Columbia and a lot of the Western United States, we've had such terrible forest fires. And uh, I just drove across the province and I could see the helicopters and the burnt timber and uh, the smoke and the flames still going that, you know, I want to start profiling those heroes, yeah, right? Uh, whether it's um, forest fire firefighters or military personnel they deserve a red carpet and they they generally put their lives on the line and i want us to i guess you know do a, a reinvigoration of what truly is a hero yeah. so um i don't know if i'm able to with my words but that is my hope and even if i parallel a bit of the um hollywood element into it like steve buscemi mm -hmm. uh that that great actor, he was yeah. a firefighter. Former firefighter well, in New York. After 9 11, he put his suit back on and he helped. And I thought, who does that? Right? So I don't think a lot of people know that. And I just want to do a, a write up about people like that. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Those uh, are you know the, what? If those are the people we should, we should want our kids to look up to, though. Exactly. Well, you've got a little kids. She'll and be three in 22 days. <laughs> Well, because I do see little kids, and I don't know how to pose for a selfie like some of those beautiful girls do, but these little ones do, and I thought, wow, right? And so I just, I, it's important for boys and girls to really keep focused on your brain because, like I said, it looks fade, and mm -hmm. you just have to focus and keep that healthy, and and if it's not reading, just keep your drive alive, you know, to learn more, see more, do more. So definitely. And I mean, we've already touched on this a little bit, but my my last question that I have for you today is with everything that you've done so far, everything that you've accomplished, what advice would you now give to your younger self if you had the chance? Uh, yeah, I would say do the contest <laughs> and do the name. Uh, but yeah, I think I would just say there's good things ahead, I guess. Um, I'm not the most secure girl and uh, I, and that's why I'm, I'm more comfortable promoting other people. So I, I don't know that I don't think I can overcome that, but I uh, no, I just would just say, keep, keep your eyes open. Keep being thankful that you wake up every day. There's, so much to learn and experience and and trust me i know all of us around the world with covid we're just dying to get out of lockdown and and see the world and and do more when we can definitely absolutely 
Definitely. So, you know, Sherry, we have enjoyed having you on our show so much today. Where can our viewers and our listeners go to find out more about your work and what you've got coming? Uh, well, I'm low key, but I'm on Facebook, Sherry Nelson, S H E R R Y. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter, XOXO, Sherry XO. And, uh, and again, if anybody has ideas for fan room, let Tim and Kathleen know, and hopefully we'll see you there. We are going to make sure that we put your Facebook and your, you said Instagram, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In our description so that our viewers can find you. And we will also link to fan room live. Thank you. We also remind everybody that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to help us keep getting awesome guests like Sherry Nelson today. So we can have these fun and random conversations uh, that kind of seem to go all over the place. But you know what? It's a ton of fun. And that's what makes this show great. Uh, and having great guests like this to have these conversations with. So please subscribe. It's going to help more than we can ever really tell you. And remember, kids, pop culture is happening all around you. And it's going to influence every part of your life. So be sure to come back next week. We'll have your fix waiting right here for you on Pop Culture Addicts. Thanks again, Sherry. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for listening to Pop Culture Addicts. If you're interested in being a guest on a future episode of Pop Culture Addicts, you can reach us on either Instagram or Twitter by using the handle at PCA Pod Show. You can also email us at PCA Pod Show at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Copyright 2021 Pop Culture Addicts. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation of by Pop Culture Addicts or any of its sponsors. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity that they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at PCAPodshow at gmail.com.